That day I realized conventional journalism is about the service of power. The shift in the media has been taking place over two, two and a half decades. That shift has come with neoliberalism. Like the coming of Thatcher in Britain and Reagan in America brought, a, brought to the fore certain kinds of journalists who were fringe earlier. You know, the far right intellectuals, the f supposed intellectuals, but the far right ideologues, they move to center, they get respectability. That's happened in the Indian press in recent times. They have become big editors. They're, they're in positions of power in the newspapers and channels. And they would be there because that's who the media owners want. That's why I said there's only two kinds of journalism. There's journalism and there's stenography. So a stenographer, you still have stenographers in courtrooms. They take down the proceedings of the court. Though the courtroom stenographer's profession is more honorable than that of the journalist stenographer. Because the courtroom stenographer takes down everybody's statements. Victim, villain, accused, defense, judge, jury, everybody, right? The journalist stenographer takes down what the powerful, the elite, and the corporate bosses say. So the stenographer reproduces verbatim what he has been handed down in record. So I'm saying that the bulk of journalism today has been reduced to we have been reduced to being stenographers to the powerful journalism as a discipline it's a discipline of verification it's a discipline of inquiry of challenge of trying to find things of debunking the third world tradition of journalism is very different from that of the west in the west your great agencies, Reuters, Havas, Wolf, they, they had nothing to do about freedom of expression. They came into being as agencies or agents of commercial intelligence. What was going on in the markets, AP and Reuters made their living on that in the transatlantic trade. In the third world countries, whether in Africa, Latin America, Asia, Journalism came into being as an anti-colonial expression of the masses. So you'll find this astonishing thing that the journalists are the most revered people in communities where the bulk of people could not read or write. But they would come out and give their lives to defend your freedom of expression. That was an organic link between journalists and masses the Mandelas, the Cabrals, the Gandhis, the Ambedkars. These were our journalists. There is every freedom fighter who was literate was also a journalist. They wrote. Third world journalism comes from that tradition of anti-colonial struggle. That tradition has been eroding after independence. In the last 20 years, it has eroded very fast. In the early, in the pre-independence period, Newspapers, magazines were founded by editors who spent half their time in prison. Many changes have occurred. What astonishes me positively is that with all these changes, there are so many young people coming to this profession in idealism. They still haven't managed to massacre that. I've been doing rural reporting forever, but full time from 93. One of the incidents that sparked it was 29 children died of malnourishment. There were all the signs of a breakdown coming in that, back, in that deprived area. The public distribution system was not working. The ration shops shelves were empty. People came in long marches to the city and told us conditions are very bad. But we were too busy looking at the meter of the sensitive index of the stock exchange to look at those poor people assembled beneath. They came all the way to the city, marching on foot, a hundred kilometers to tell us things are bad. They're in a state of collapse. We consigned them to one photograph in the newspaper. Farmers demand remunerative prices because that's all they're supposed to do, okay? They were saying the medical centers are not functioning. 
The public medical centers are wound up. There's no doctor. We're running out of water because that's being diverted to the city. Our children are hungry. We're not having enough food. They warned us. How did the media respond? Nothing. And then when the breakdown came, we were also heroic about bashing the government on the head. What about our complicity? We covered that as an event. Had we covered hunger as a process, the kids might be alive. I had also had an earlier experience where I covered drought in nine major states in 84. I was a conventionally trained journalist, news agency, the big, second biggest news agency in Asia, etc. When I went out and covered the drought, first thing I found that it was not an issue of water crisis, it was not just an issue of rainfall. Second, I had this incredibly powerful experience of talking to people and coming back and writing it in conventional journalism, which did not allow for their voice. And I look back and that day I realized Conventional journalism is about the service of power. And I promised myself that I will come back to these places and I will do it differently. That had been festering in my mind since then. Because conventional journalism always gives the last word to authority. Yeah? Finally, you quote that State Department official or the collector or the minister or someone and wind up your story with that. When I went back, I changed the weightage rules completely. You may be the chief administrative officer of the district who's been in the place six weeks after being posted there. You, your voice is not more important and does not carry more weight than a woman who has farmed and tilled the soil of the land for 40 years. She knows more about what's going on than you do. I will apply that weightage um, in my own rules of weightage to, to what you say and what she says. So it was to whittle down the voice of the powerful and the privileged and the uh, official and authority and let people's voices speak more. My mistake on the first round was that everywhere I tried telling the story myself. The second time, I let people tell their story and tried giving it a context and a frame. I have two sites, psynath.org, and one which is really our experiment, I think a really great one, People's Archive of Rural India, ruralindiaonline.org. Our slogan is everyday lives of everyday people. Now, one of the problems with the NGO type journalism and the well-meaning middle class guy journalism is that you go out there and tell us all the dreary, terrible, horrible things and how bad things are. But in those people's lives are also fun, are also humor, sometimes graveyard humor. Yeah, but it's there. So wh why are you keeping it out should be the question. It should not be why I'm putting it in. Why do we keep it out? Journalists often are on the side of the fanatical protection of copyright, which is absurd because the duty of artists and, and journalists is to spread the information as much as, as possible.